Good morning, everybody. It's Sally, and it's um, Thursday morning, and it's kind of early, and uh, I was trying to decide how to green light my day this morning. I've had a rough week. I will not kid you. Um, there's been some hiccups in the path that I thought that my family was all moving along happily, and uh, and it's caused a lot of you know angst and uncertainty and for the for a few days and it's still an unknown future but then all futures are unknown not for me we're good to go we're moving back to the states i know what we're doing uh so in a few months we will be home um and i'm looking forward to it i i really am um but i wanted to green light with something that i had forgotten about i love the book the prophet by hildebrand I used to read it when I was 16, over and over. I'd read it in the backyard, in the green grass, you know, just communing with nature and reading The Prophet and many other works by Gibran. I, I love his writing. And there are several things I can still quote. This one speaks to my heart because it's about children. And this week our... Um, our our things were had to do with my children and um, and things not working out quite like you want them and as much as we try um, it's a complicated relationship with children they can cut you deeper as um, Shakespeare wrote in uh, King Lear how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child and sometimes your children seem thankless and they cut you do they do cut you sharper than a serpent's tooth and sometimes they they are in the moment thankless maybe they don't really understand because they've not been parents themselves what it's like so today i wanted to read you this poem it's not a poem it's a it what is it is a piece of literary writing that is poetic and whatever but it's not a poem I love it. Um, I have a link that I'll put here that you can look, read the whole book online. It's a little, little book. But when I read this and it touched me the most was when I was the child. And now from the parent perspective, although my children are 30, close to 30, one just 30, one just below, it's still true. And it helps me have a little more perspective. So... I share this with you, and I hope it greenlights your day, certainly helping me greenlight mine. So here we go. And a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, Speak to us of children. And he said, Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing after itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backwards, nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark on the path of the infinite. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite and he bends you 
with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let not your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. Oh, let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. For even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. Kihil Gibran. This is one of many writings he has done, all on different topics in this book, The Prophet. It's about a, a character who comes in on a ship, is there for the day, and the people speak to him, and he asks him questions, and he responds, and then he boards the boat and goes off to the next place. Um, there's actually a cartoon being made of this that's going to release this summer. I, I was shocked today when I looked this up that that's what popped up, that Selma Hayek has produced a, a story of this in cartoon form, which is very interesting. So this spoke to me because as a child, I wanted to distance myself from who my parents were in many ways. That's what naturally happens. You want to break away and be your own, have your own identity. So I didn't want to be contaminated by their old world thinking and their prejudices and their this and their that. But see, that's the arrogance of youth, and I understand that now. And, and also, it's normal. We should want to separate and be our own people with our own thoughts and to know you're allowed to have your own thoughts. Um, and as much as I love my children, and I love them, I have also wanted to control and help shape them and mold them into, I, I don't want to say my own image, but in the image of what my heart holds and thinks is valued and important. But that's what's important to me. My children have both had their own paths of discovery, and we have to let them have them. So, I share that with you. Um, I really appreciate the truth of it, that my children are not my children, but the sons and daughters of life longing for itself. And that they are arrows and we are the bow, but we are the bow in the hand of the Master who sees the infinite path that he has set before them. And that they live in the world of tomorrow of which we cannot go, not even in our dreams. We've had our chance. And our chance is still going on. Every day is another life, another moment, another childhood, another growth period, another self-discovery. We don't have to live our children's lives for our satisfaction. We can live our own and set them free and love them and be here and let them go. And they'll come back. They'll visit. They'll find their own truth their own pain, their own joy, and their own destiny. And I wish that for my own girls. You guys have a great day. I'll see you next week. Bye.